as a CEO for a long time, the question I would ask myself is, who can I hire to solve this problem for me? But in the last 90 days here on the 100 Days of AI, the question has been, how can I get AI to do this job for me? And in a recent video, I showed how I created a Claude project that creates amazing SEO-optimized written content for our blog at Castos. And it was a really popular video. And so I open sourced it. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can get access to this, how you can use it for yourself, how I went through the process of converting a private Claude Code project to a public one, how you can think about publishing this to the web and sharing it with your team, and walking through exactly how you can use Claude Code as a marketer to 10X your output so you don't have to hire that expensive and maybe crappy SEO agency, you can do it yourself, have full control over the code and the mechanics and how the tool works and the outcome that you get from it. Hey, I'm Craig Hewitt. Welcome back to 100 Days of AI. Taking a slight detour from our Linkberry project to focus on marketing again, because nothing matters if you don't have customers. You can build the best tool ever, software or SaaS or agency, but if you don't have customers, then nothing matters. And long form written, SEO optimized content is still a really good way to get eyeballs and get attention and get folks paying attention to your brand. It's one that we've done at Castos for 12 years and I still very much believe in it. If you rewind to a previous video, probably about a week and a half ago, I went through how I created a Claude Code project that pulls in data from Google Search Console, Google Analytics, and a, a kind of a Hrefs-esque tool called Data for SEO to, to get like search results in, lets me uh, identify gaps in the content that we've written, articles that we should write, articles that we should update, and actually goes through and researches, outlines, and writes those articles. And I've open sourced that on GitHub for you to download, use, contribute to if you want, and do whatever you want to. Even if you just wanna go look at how we created it, you can, it's there, it's entirely free. I may create a paid service around this, but for now I just wanted to share it with you because I got a lot of great response from the previous video. And in this video, I just wanna share a walkthrough of what actually the tool does and how you might think about using it in your business. Cool, so uh, here in GitHub, we can see the repo. So uh, I'm the Craig Hewitt and it's called SEO Machine. I'm gonna buy seomachine.io. By the time this goes out, <laughs> it will go live and it'll just redirect here for now. So we're calling it SEO Machine, and this has a couple of things. Uh, it's funny, as I'm looking at this, I've been working in Claude Code and Cursor so much that it's easier for me to look at this in Claude Code. But um, <laughs> we'll, we'll look at it here in GitHub just in case you're not in the terminal and in an IDE yet. Um, but this does a couple of things. So we have some custom commands. So in Claude Code, you can run slash commands. And so we have a slash command for research, for write, for rewrite, analyze existing, optimize a piece of content, and performance review. So performance review will take data from the three data sources I mentioned, so Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and data for SEO, which is like an Ahrefs type tool, uh, and talk about how your, how your content is performing relative to a previous period. Cool, uh, and then we have agents, so a content analyzer, SEO optimizer, meta, um, a metadata analysis tool, internal linking, keyword mapping, editor, and performance analysis agents. And the data that we have are Google Analytics 4, GA4, Google Search Console, and Data for SEO. And you'll just be able to hook your own tools up into this and pull real data from your website. Cool, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And then the whole key of why this is such a powerful tool is it has an enormous amount of context about you, your brand, how you write, the things you write for, who you write for, and what you're trying to get out of this. And we'll go through all that in just a second. Okay, and then we have uh, show you how to get started here. So let's walk through the context. So I think it's the most important part of all of this, like the technical parts, like if you're a developer, you should be able to figure this out. If you're not, uh, get a developer or just reply in the comments here and either I or someone will help you get this installed, but it all should be right here. So, so there's a few pieces of context that you will want to get and you want to take the time to fill this in. Like you could use AI to fill this in, but, but this is by far the most important part of the whole project. So don't skimp on this. If you're gonna use precious brain cells of actually doing hard work and creating something from scratch, spend it on this. Okay, so the first is the brand voice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch because I wanna keep this list here. 
But I want to switch over to this to pull up the context folder and brand voice. And the brand voice has a few pillars. Uh, and so instructions, define three to five voice pillars that capture your brand's personality. Each pillar should include what it means, like the concept, how it sounds, an example, and what to avoid. And we have examples of this from Castos. So I left the actual work I did in Castos in here. And if you go over to examples, you can see the Castos brand voice here. Okay. So don't copy this. This is for my brand at Castos. Yours, unless you're a podcast hosting company, in which case I don't want you to use this. <laughs> but even if you do, you should you should have a different perspective than than we do. But but I have examples of this here for my business, and I left those in, and those are in the examples folder. And we have these for all of the bits of context back to this list that you should fill out. Okay, so I left in the examples that I created. Uh, but you'll have your brand voice, tone variations by content type. So like a how-to guide, a strategy, and in industry news or trends, and product uh, product updates. By the way, if you want to just say to Claude Code, hey, I don't want to do this. You take a first shot at it. Go crawl my website and do a whole bunch of research and then fill this in. That That's fine. That's a fine starting point. The one thing I would caution you on is there's this concept I have with AI of like the tail wagging the dog. If it does that, then it might go do a bunch of stuff that you might not have thought of and that you don't think is important, but you're probably not gonna go to the trouble of correcting it. So I would just caution you against letting AI do this part. Everything else, it can be on autopilot, but you probably need to do the hard work to really sit down and do this, okay? And if you've done a lot of content, you'll have this. Okay, so value propositions, sentence structure, like what do you want your sentences to be like? paragraph structure, word choice, all these kind of stuff. So take the time and fill this in. Okay, so that's your brand voice. Competitor analysis. How does your company compare to other people in your space? Cool. Pretty self-explanatory here. Fill in the blanks. What about features? What does your product or service do that adds value to your customers, right? So feature, benefit, and conversion angle. Like what does this do to convert people from onlookers to people paying you money? Pretty important. Internal links. Do you have important pages on your site that you want to make sure each new piece of content that we create links to? Really important. And you should go through and create uh, when to link to these pieces and what kinds of anchor text, like what kinds of words do you want to hyperlink to this other page? All really important. So just like this, this could take you hours to do. Don't skimp on it. This you don't need to update. This you might want to update, right? Um, this is like a style guide. And this last one is maybe the most important, is you'll want to bring in several actual articles and bring in the entire thing. I When I did this, I had uh, several different types of articles. I think I did five. They were all like 2,000 words, and they were some of our best performing content. I think I did like a product review, kind of a how-to, and a couple of other examples. They're probably in the examples folder here, right here. These are the, so let's see, I had how to do a podcast or, or what is a podcast. Uh, if I scroll down, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. sorry, I don't mean to be giving you like a seizure here. Publish your podcast to uh, YouTube is another one, right? So, you know, you bring in the examples that you want. I think when I did this, I thought like, hey, these should kind of span the spectrum of types of articles, perspectives that I have, even people on my team that have written maybe to, to get like a, a broad view of things. This is the basis through which it will analyze your writing and hopefully do a really good job. Okay, so back to GitHub. This is the list of things that you'll want to either do or tweak that I've kind of given a starting point to here. Okay, so there's a fair amount for you to do here. I won't lie. This is not like you download this, install it in Claude Code and click a button and go. This is the scaffolding and the framework for an immensely powerful content tool. That's why we call it SEO machine. <laughs> uh, that you definitely can just download and you know have Claude fill it in the blanks for you and you'll probably get kind of average results. If you take the time to really go and explore and fill this in and give your personality and your brand perspective, it'll just perform that much better.
Okay, so the workflow from there. So, the, so once you have all of the context, you're ready to start doing the work. And so you can use the slash commands. So in here, if you're to open up Claude code, you could say, just run Claude. And you could do research. SEO writing. So it's going to read all of these tools, which don't have anything in them, right? Uh, and then it's going to do a, a comprehensive keyword research and competitive analysis for the term SEO writing. Uh, it's going to search the web. It's going to, it would pull data from your Google Analytics, Google Search Console and data for SEO, but those are not connected here on this demo account. So that probably won't work, but that's how you use slash commands. You open up the terminal, start Claude code and type in a slash command and give it an argument. Okay, so that's what it's talking about here. Performs keyword research, analyzes top competitors, identifies content gaps, and creates a comprehensive brief for you to work with, okay? Um, and so you say like research content marketing for B2B SaaS, okay? Then you write about that and it takes all of the data it just got and feeds it into a really robust system prompt to create this article, cool? And you would give it a prompt like that, cool? And then you can do like optimize, uh, from the drafts folder. So when it creates a file, in this test project, we don't have the data sources connected. So it's not gonna do like its whole job here. And that's why I stopped it. Um, but over here, it will output articles that it writes in the drafts folder. So we don't have any right now, but that's where they'll go, okay? And then from there, you could say like, hey, I want you to update an existing piece of content. So analyze existing content and you just put the URL from your website in there. It will pull all that in and do the same exact analysis on it and say like, hey, how's this performing? It'll get data uh, and then it'll get data on the actual text there. Cool. And then write or rewrite or update here. So this is the guts of the project. Uh, and then we have agents that run here. And so what I would ask of you is, first of all, I'd love some feedback. So this is open source. Uh, so here on GitHub, it's entirely open source. You can do a pull request. You can fork this. You can watch it, which would make me feel really great. <laughs> it's kind of like a YouTube view or a comment. You can star it. I'm going to go ahead and star it because I want to be, I want to be popular. Um, and you can contribute. If you're like, hey, this is cool, but what would be really cool is if I got, you know, added comments from my WordPress site, or I want to publish this to WordPress automatically. I'm going to create an integration and I'm going to push this back. Uh, Matt Mullenwig, love him or hate him, said open source software is one of the seven wonders of the world. I don't know if I agree with that, but it is pretty powerful if a bunch of us get together and contribute to something like this. So we can make writing content that much easier and better for us and our brands and our customers. And now there's a way for us to do this together. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you use it. Uh, everything is here. I'll leave the link for this in the description below. And I'd love to hear how you're using this. By the way, I converted this and open sourced it just with Claude. I went into the private one that we're using at Castos. Uh, I just said, hey, I want to make this open source. And they, it did it in about 30 minutes. So if you have anything like that that's private, and you want to share a public version of it, it's pretty easy to do uh, just with Claude. And I don't think there's anything in here that's proprietary at this point, um, other than maybe our examples, which are not like, I don't know. There's not like all this is on the internet for us. So there's nothing proprietary about this that, that I really worry about. Um, but hey, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please drop a comment in below with what you think of this. Uh, if you're in GitHub and start playing around with it, and you want to do a pull request, you want to contribute back, that would be awesome. I'm Craig Hewitt. This is 100 Days of AI. We've got about 10 days left. Tomorrow, back to building features and tweaking the actual functionality of Linkberry. But I wanted to build this because we're going to fire up a ton of content for the Linkberry project, and that's coming soon. We're already doing this for Castos and getting some really cool results.